Well, man, what a nice little group tonight. It's good to see everybody. Glad y'all are here. Won't y'all give yourselves a little praise off from getting out in the cold and showing up this evening. Uh, we got Murphs here with us tonight, so we're going to have a little singing. Uh, just a couple little house cleaning things. Uh, I've got to be out of town next Wednesday, and so Jim Murphy is going to come with his family. They're going to share some songs, and he's going to bring a word next week. So uh, I thought that would be really good. How I many of y'all be glad to have old Murph up there? I told the guy here a while back, he's asked me how our church is doing, and I said, well, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. I mean, most of them want to go check the bank account or the seats or the building project. Or I said, well, the best I can tell, the kitchen tables around here are starting to do pretty good. There's some people kind of getting their ducks, at least in a group, maybe not everybody in a row, but we're doing pretty good. And I said, they seem really healthy. And I said, I think the best part that I've done in the last 20 years is uh, I've been being gone some. And that's the truth. Honestly, if you kind of get out of the way every now and then, how many people lean on your pastor? How many of y'all know if you lean on me, you're fixing to fall over? <laughs> yeah. No, I'll walk with you anywhere, but I'm not going to carry you everywhere either. And so, uh, you know, we're kind of a do-it-on-your-own kind of group. And when I do got to be gone, there's plenty of people around here who are plenty anointed, plenty capable to hear from God and bring a word. In 20 years, I've never went to the Rolodex. I've never went outside the building. If I wanted to bring somebody is here because God connected us somehow and they wanted, we wanted them to come visit. But otherwise, you're going to bring a word. It's going to come pretty much from our body, somebody around here. And it's always a good word. Curtis, Allen, Leonard, Jim, whoever whoever does some of this, the one key component. I don't care if you got letters behind your name. I don't care what you, tribe you came out of. I don't care about any of that. I care about one thing. If I believe you can hear God, if I believe you can hear God, then I believe that God will give you something to say that will be beneficial to everybody here. If I think that you've got to go hunt it up and figure it out, you're probably going to get to preach somewhere else. But if I believe you can hear God and your guy will sit still for a minute and say, hey, God, i got to talk to these people. You got something you want to tell them? He will do that every time. He is faithful to do that every time. And so before we get Murphs up here, oh, the other thing, we do have some Christian entertainment coming. On December the 14th, Cleve and A.J., are coming, and they're going to bring a special guest. I don't know if we're doing anything tonight or not. Are we doing something tonight? Ransom. Well, we might here. Ransom plays his little mandolin, kind of. And uh, anyhow, Cleve caught that on Facebook one day or something. So he called me this week, and he said, what about the mandolin player? And I said, well, it depends on what he is this today. Some days he's a mandolin player, and some days he's a saddle bronc rider, and well, I'll check with him. He said, well, you tell him to bring his mandolin, and he can just start, and we'll fill in the blanks, and we're going to do our thing. So we plugged him in up here tonight, and uh, we'll see if anything comes of that later on. So he does pretty good on his little mandolin. But they're going to be here on the 14th, and so uh, we're going to have a good night. We'll get some snacks or something figured out. I don't know what we'll do, but just just come to fellowship and enjoy and just – sing and enjoy and be entertained together in some good Christian entertainment and and so uh we want to do that. The the season is is uh is a really good time. You know, we've we've preached and taught around here a lot of details, a lot of different things, a lot of things about Christmas and Constantinianism and all these different things. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day I know I know what day Jesus wasn't born on, but I do know he was born. And I know that there was a virgin named Mary who was impregnated by God himself through the Holy Spirit. I know there's angels. I know there was some shepherds. 
I know everything the book of Luke says, the book of Matthew says, is be absolutely true. So, if society is chosen for whatever reason, I don't pray to a tree, so I'm fine. Don't, don't show me that scripture in the Bible. I don't, I don't believe my tree is going to bring me nothing unless I had an apple tree or something. There are certain things about the whole trapping that you can be disgusted with, you can enjoy. But the truth of the matter is, all these different things, when done from inside the home and done in context, it helps us to congregate. It helps us to stop. I've thought about this a lot the last couple of years. We got home from the horse sale the other day, woke up Monday morning. We've been going up day and night. Rob and she's worked plumb down to nothing. And by noon Monday, we had 22 people at our house. What a blessing. If you didn't have a holiday, we'd have never done it until somebody died. I just want you to think. There are certain things that will make a sh sale barn shut down for two weeks. So whether right, wrong, religiously correct, I don't know. We're going to handle it at our house how we handle it. There's some of this stuff that is totally ridiculous, and we're going to do it anyhow. <laughs> That's just how it goes. That's going to include eating, buying stuff for other people. I, 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 this, this year, I got to buy the presents for mo all the guys at our house pretty much. Because they all want cowboy stuff, so now I'm in charge. Yeah, nobody's going to take that away from me. It's not my form of worship. But it's a great opportunity to give something back. And to do something for somebody else. So, in the midst of all the stuff... I don't care if you're anti-Constantinianism or you're super Jewish or I, I don't I don't care where you fall in the mix of things. This season's going to happen whether you like it or not. You can either use parts of this to your advantage, or you can just cross your arms, stick your chin out, and just be an old churchy. You know, there's a word somewhere for this. <laughs> That can't go on Facebook right now. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm kind of at a loss in my narrow dictionary here. So, <laughs> But y'all get the point, don't you? There's things about this that, remember, there's about seven years ago when I preached a message on this Wednesday night before Christmas, and it was called A Baby Changes Everything. That one turns seven this January. Now, if your focus is on your religion, you probably screwed it up already anyhow. But if your focus is on the life that's around you and what God actually did by the Creator coming here as Himself and opening a door, you're going to hear this tonight, opening a door one time, that no man can shut. If those are the things you focus on in your family, and your friends, if you get a lump in your throat because you like singing a few Christmas songs, if a little town of Bethlehem bothers you, you're probably doing good. Don't rob yourself of that. Don't rob yourself. Have a spirit-led Christmas. How about that? Doesn't that sound like a good idea? Have a spirit-led Christmas. If it's spirit-led, then it is approved by God. Because the Holy Spirit is His stamp of approval. So, that's all I got to say about that tonight. Let's pray and we'll get to Murph's up here. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you tonight for for just how good, how gracious you are. Tonight, Lord, use my mouth to bring out the very best of you, the reality of who you are, 
The reality of who you are as the owner of the universe tonight. Lord, help me use your, your guidance tonight, Lord, to explain that one door that's been opened and how we walk, in this, walk through that door and become your children, your co-heirs, children of opportunity. So we're going to talk about that tonight, Lord. And we just give you all this time, redeem the time, and we give you all the glory. Have your way through us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand up. You've been sitting long enough. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, let the name of the Lord be praised. Both now and forevermore, all of heaven and earth proclaim. Let the name of the Lord be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Is 
You have anything you want to tell them tonight, Murph? Huh? You good? How'd y'all like it? Hey, anybody want to hear a little mandolin right quick? Can we plug him in right quick? Get up here, Ranch. Come on. This cowboy version. Y'all don't hold him to the notes. Are you going to sing too? Thank you. 
job, Rancy Pants. That's uh, his his pop, his other pop, has worked with him on the guitar a little bit and on the mandolin, and then that that ain't nothing more than a little bugger sitting in his room picking around till he figured it out. And the reason I wanted to say that tonight because there's a lot of people walking around through the earth that hadn't figured anything out yet. Probably because you hadn't went and locked yourself in a room and picked around till you did. That includes this right here. Go pick around a little till you figure it out. So anyhow, proud of you, bud. Happy birthday. Y'all can spank him on the way out this evening. Uh, Psalms 103. I want to talk out of that a little bit tonight. We've uh, Oh, it's been, it's been pretty interesting here the last month or two, and God's shown me a lot of stuff. He's changed my heart about a lot of stuff. I hadn't changed my mind about everything, but he's changed my heart a lot, the way I look things and, 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 and different things. And then I've been in this deal here for a, for a, for a long time, and I, don't, I didn't want to say much about it. I'm not going to say too much about it tonight, but, but our life – got to fooling around and and I've, I've told everybody robin thinks i'm having my fifth midlife crisis because I've, I've been we've been buying horses we we've had a lot of horses a lot of horses come through our place uh anybody that keeps up a little bit you know they're not cheap and sometimes even at our lower level it'll take your breath away a little every now and then and, and but but every bit of it has been where I knew God was leading me to do something. Like, some of this will be hard to tell. Like, I got a little bay horse at home we call Clovis. He was a mistake at the Clovis horse sale in, back in August. And on Sunday morning, we got up, and this little bay horse is sitting out there in the pen, and nobody owns him. By the end of the day, we owned him. Robin, she said, you don't, you don't have to go buy that horse. I didn't have to buy that horse off that guy. He, did, he, he, he had plenty to pick, pick apart on him. And I told her, I said, I smell a little God on this horse now. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to enter up and just see how it plays out. Well, that horse will probably teach that boy right over there as much about riding a horse as any horse he's ever been on. We didn't even know it. He rides him all the time. That horse is amazing. I, we get out in the arena the other day, and there's Ryder Jay. He's got his hand stuck straight out, and the bridle reins on his neck, and that horse just turned around as perfect as he turned around. Steers got back on us the other day, and them steers come through the gate, and old Clovis, he just jumps down on the ground, and he's been fairly well kind of trained in the cutting before Team Roper messed him up. He was doing really good. And uh, Ryder, he's just grinning from ear to ear, and he's, Watch this, Paul. Paul. Well, we ain't had one within five miles of our place broke as good as that son of a gun. There's, there's, you can, you can teach, and this applies to our walk. All this applies to our walk. You can teach a man how to get on, how to turn left, how to turn right, how to stop, and how to back up. You can't teach feel. You got to get in the saddle, and you got to feel it. And before you can duplicate it in another horse, you got to feel it in that one. It's the same way with the spirit-led life. you got to come to a place where you know God is leading you to do things every day. Every day. Stuff that looks stupid. Stuff that's expensive. Stuff that doesn't look right. Stuff that's sacrificial. How you buy one thing one day and give it away the next. And so we've been buying horses, and we've been placing them. This one will go here, and this one goes here, and Rhett's going to get this one over here, and, and we're, and we're going to do this. Steve Reed might get one, or, or uh, Bunk Skelton, and we got a great story about Bunk that happened right here the night he preached. Out of that whole deal, he ended up with a horse. The whole deal looked like a teetotal disaster. I even had to take a cussing over it. But it was God at work. Well, now, why would you talk about stuff like that? Because for some of us, 
second to God and our family, horses are important. If you hadn't noticed, there's a movement. If we don't sell out our bowl of stew, sell out our heritage for a bowl of stew to Hollywood, see, that could get me in trouble because i got to go hang out with them here for a week. But everybody pretty well knows where I'm at. It's like some of the TV shows. People ask me, do you watch that? Nah. Well, I know the language. You kind of, oh, don't worry about the language. I grew up in a sale barn. I can say those words better than they can. That was my first language. English was my second. But now if you're going to wear your cowboy hat backwards and your spurs up down, upside down, I'm out. <laughs> That's our heritage. We Christians better be sure we don't sell out too. But all that being said, there's a prophecy by Smith, Smith Wigglesworth in 1890, and I've talked about it a lot all over the country. He said that the United States of America would be evangelized by the Western way of life. In our infinite wisdom, that we meant that we thought that meant creating cowboy churches. No, it's a way of life. Christians got to do the same thing. If we're going to evangelize the world, it has to become our way of life. That means actually knowing God, recognizing God, hearing God, and doing things according to His direction. So in our life with the horse and everything, we count all of it as ministry. See, we didn't create a ministry. We live one. In that ministry, you create opportunity. I want you to hear this tonight because if you are a Christian today, your life of ministry creates opportunity. Because that's how our Father does it. I talked about it Monday morning, the gift of opportunity. And so with the horses, God has shown us how we can take in, in an area of our expertise, and it's not a knack. I know you take my grandson, Rhett. He's pretty much nilly-willy about every horse we had him on around there. Then we had him on an old 30-year-old that we got around there, and he just had to pound his guts out to get him to move and Pretty soon, if you got to do that all day, riding a horse isn't any fun. But I had an old horse standing there at my house that Ransom was roping on, and everybody was pretty much enjoying him. And I just knew that if Red ever got on that horse, this was the deal. So one day while nobody's looking, I'd just stick him on there. When they all turn around, he's done took off in a lope. He ain't quit loping him since. That horse now lives in Oklahoma, and he ropes a dummy on him and does all the stuff. Not one ounce of fear. Everything was just perfect, and there you go. This kind of stuff's just been happening. So the other night, we had, uh, I don't know if it was, I think we had just got home from Oklahoma or something and gone to get another horse. And uh, anyhow, I was just talking to God, walking to the barn. And two things. I wish Dusty Leatherwood was here tonight. He was coming. Me and him have talked a lot lately about Enoch. How many of y'all know the story of Enoch? What was his number one thing on his resume? He walked with God. Christianity Today, we teach people how to sit with God. And that night, I was walking with God. Well, right across my little parking lot there, and I said, Lord, I feel like a fool. I got building projects half done. I got horses standing around here everywhere. We're sending this one to this place and this and this place. And we're driving around getting this one and doing all this. And, Lord, I know you've told me to do every nickel of it. But some of this just don't look very good. It looks kind of dumb, really. What are you trying to show me? And he spoke to me and he said, I'm trying to give you a glimpse of what it looks like from where I sit. I'm the owner. And I create opportunity. The hard part is there's a lot of people walking around who don't even recognize opportunity. He said, not even the ones that pretend to know me that don't know me. He said, that, not them. But my children who don't recognize opportunity in their everyday life. 
This is when I realized that a pagan holiday is a great opportunity. They've been trying to get me to not be on Facebook for three years now. What a great opportunity to reach thousands and thousands of people with the gospel of Jesus Christ on the enemy's highway. <laughs> oh, there was a guy on stage about a week ago or so said, the darker, the, the darker it gets, the less light it takes to light it up. He said, and then, then there's those who realize the opportunity and they just won't do it. They just won't take the step. I'm providing opportunities. How many of you as Christians believe that the opportunities God gives you is to tell somebody about Jesus or to witness or to buy somebody lunch or, or do something like that? Maybe God will tell you to buy a horse and you ain't got no idea where he's going or what he's doing or why you got him. And you won't know until things kind of come to fruition. He might tell you everything, every day in your life, how to run your business. Full well knowing on down the road, somewhere in here, somebody's going to catch a glimpse of the kingdom of God. Somebody's going to recognize opportunity. And in this midst of all this opportunity that our heavenly Father creates because he's the owner. But no, we told everybody that every, God's in control and he's a grand puppeteer and everything happens for a reason. So every car wreck was God's fault. Every rapist was God's fault. Every Muslim terrorist was God's fault. Everything, every disaster was God's God's fault. No, it's not all God's fault. God is the owner of all this. He has relinquished authority over to us. He gave us ears to hear. He gave us a spirit that speaks. And he said, now all you got to do is listen. If you'll listen and take the opportunity, I will help you make your life as full as possible. And he's going to do it with the things and the people you love. Because where your heart is, there your treasure is also. He knows he can have my full attention with a horse. You know what's easy for me to do? Buy a horse. You know what's hard for me to do? Sell a horse. So sometimes I just give them away. It looks crazy. But I'm the owner. So it's in my ability to create opportunity. The hardest part in all that is there's people in my life that don't recognize opportunity. There's people in my life that recognize opportunity, but they just don't want to put forth the effort to do it. Or they're too fearful to try it. Some people take the opportunity and they're so selfish they screw it up. And then there's people that just simply take the ball and run with it. Not even knowing it, I know a kid that sold chickens out of the back of a pickup. An opportunity came to the gate one day. And the guy said, I'll give you a job. And that kid said, okay. So the first five years I was employed, and the other guys came around to give me a break. I refused to go on break. I wanted to be the first one there, the last one to leave, and I didn't want to miss one iota of what was going on. Later on in life, coming to know Jesus and starting to learn how to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, John 10 has come to full fruition. I will give you life and give you life abundant, life to the full. Life to the full is the greatest evangelism tool known to man. Fear of hell won't do it, and the allurement of heaven won't do it. Those are all momentary things. Fullness of life, to be able to sit at a sail barn and People start talking about all the things, how expensive a loaf of bread is. And you explain to them that Joe Biden is an employee of mine. And as sorry as he is, I can't fire him, but he is an employee. 
He's not the king. He's not the prince. He's not the ruler of all. That one I know, and his name's Jesus. He supersedes all governments. So every stupid move that a Luciferian makes works in my favor because my Father has created the opportunity because He is the guardian. He is providential. He's not running a puppet show. Therefore, at every opportunity, I have the opportunity to choose. Throughout the Bible, choose for yourself. Choose this day. Choose now. Choose. That's freedom. The word choose is accompanied and only provided by freedom. That's why we fight for our nation. That's why we stay in the battle to preserve freedom for our family that's coming down the road. But my freedom today is given by God because He's providential and He creates opportunity. Therefore, there's always a choice. That's freedom. The trick in this is, do I have ears to hear? And do I know and do I understand who God really is? Will I listen when it sounds weird? I'm blessed because I've got a wife who puts up with my craziness. When she's looking at this little skinny horse and the big bill, <laughs> she's going, hey, you really don't have to buy that horse. Well, honey, I met a little God on that horse. We'll do whatever you think you need to do. You see, whatever any two of you agree on, therefore it shall be done. And it takes a minute to get to that place. But to catch a glimpse of this from God's place, sure help me with my grace. Can you imagine watching this since the beginning of time? Can you imagine God watching the Israelites for 40 stinking years going, holy buckets. I mean, how many times did he talk it over with Moses? These people are stupid. Moses, I'm going to kill them all. They're just stupid. Moses, he's, hold on a minute. Let me talk to him one more time. Think about that. How much opportunity have we been provided? What if we only see God through the lens of our upbringing and our religion? Can we really know him? Can we really hear him? Until we can, can we really obey? Is this about having spirit-filled get-togethers? Or is this about getting up every morning and living a spirit-led life? I mean, there's a big difference. And so... While I've been monkeying around with all this, this morning I went to Psalms 103. And I just want to read this because Psalms 103 is such a great explanation of God, who He is. And it starts out and it says, Bless, O Lord, my soul, and all is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. And then it goes down the list, all these things. Before I read this, could you list the benefits of God? What would be the first benefit on your list? I can, I can tell you mine immediately. The best benefit of God for me, after forgiveness, was a voice I could hear. In everyday life, that, to me, is the most beneficial thing about God is He has a voice I can hear. Therefore, I can choose to obey or choose not to. And he said, forget not all these benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. That's so awesome. The night I got saved, I didn't get saved from hell. I got saved from me. Which, by the way, in two more days will be my birthday. Born again, December 3rd, 1995. What'll that make it? 27 years. Isn't that about right? Yeah. So he says right here, 
who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. My only issue in this life is this 19-year-old mind and this 62-year-old body. Some days they argue. I want to stay fresh-minded. I want to stay silly. I want to. I don't want to get where I can't feel. I don't want to get where I don't have a passion. I don't want to get where I got nothing to do. I, I want to know there's a battlefield. I want to know there's a playground. I want to know. I want to be that same kid in second grade, spend his whole day staring out the window wishing he was outside. My wife, my secretary, my two daughters, and everybody around me knows I'm still that guy. <laughs> Put me in the office, and you know for a fact I'm staring out the window wishing I was somewhere else. He said, uh, the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. See, we're starting to see that providence. There was somebody in the desert who could hear. And he did things in front of the people who couldn't hear. Yet it wasn't enough. And he said, and the Lord is merciful, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. How many of y'all are living proof of his graciousness and his slowness to anger? If you understand that a little bit, how many of y'all are glad today that his judgment isn't quite as swift as it ought to be? He said, he'll not always, but he will not always strive with us. Nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. Now I want to interject something right here because I think this is where it gets a little confusing. How far does heaven reach? Long ways, doesn't it? What is heaven? It's the dwelling place of God. It's the atmosphere of God. Because heaven reaches a long ways does not mean that our Father is a long ways from home. Where does heaven start? Where is the atmosphere of God? Where is His dwelling place? Right here. Right now, He is with us. He walks with us. To be an Enoch and walk with God. Not just have to go sit. Yeah, He says, be still and know I'm the Lord. My God, we're the be still group on steroids. How about walking every day? How many of y'all got to get up tomorrow and go somewhere? You got to move. Murph, what's wrong with walking with God while you're saddling a horse in the morning to go check your cattle? I was loading some stupid roping steers this morning. If I'd have known what little they were going to bring at the cow sale day, <laughs> I'd just turn them out in the road and let the neighbors have them. I about killed myself trying to load them stupid things. <laughs> I'm glad I stayed to pick up the check. There wouldn't be, there'd be enough postage to <laughs> send it to me. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> And I told God, I said, you got to help me. I do this every time I load cattle at my house. I don't have very good spots. So every time I said, Lord, you got to help me load these cattle. I had two of them that just would not look away from me. They just look at me. And then they just split. Well, this morning there was a lot of frost on the ground and it was slick. I told them steers, I said, if you turn me upside down, I'm going to get the gun. I'm going to shoot every one of you. And then a couple of times I talked to him in a special language. <laughs> and I had to tell God, sorry about that. I had a little slippage because my feet were slipping. And it was just kind of a little small disaster for a minute. 
he full well understood, but he never left. He never, he was always there. And then pretty soon, as always, always, I've told these stories, as always, here in just a minute, I did learn something, though, about us. I had two steers on there that kind of whipped on the other two. So when them two that whipped on them went in the trailer, they was a little bit bully. The other two was pretty timid. They wouldn't go in the trailer while the bullies were in the trailer. So I finally run up there and shut the gate and made room for the timid ones. And then they went in the trailer. How many of us are afraid of who might be standing in front of us? Won't go where we're being sent because of a predetermined opinion about somebody else. When as crazy as it looks, you should just follow God. You see, when you're walking with God, you can build a whole message around loading rope and steers. Slipping around out there on the frost. <laughs> Ryder J. <laughs> he thinks that's pretty funny when his pawpaw ends up upside down. <laughs> he said, so crazy is mercy towards those who fear him as far as the east is from the west. So far as he removed our transgression from him, as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him or has a heart towards those who fear him. As we are children, we have got to begin to understand God is our father. Understand the guardianship and the providence of God. Not as God is king and manipulator, but as a father who loves us, who is tender towards us, who has a heart that understands us, but who continues to create opportunity in our life, give us room to make choices, latitude to move to the left and to the right, and to walk this out and learn from our mistakes and be guided by the leading of the Lord and let the Word of God be a lamp unto our feet. Not our religion, but to walk with God while you're doing your thing. I wonder how many cowboys out there could benefit by riding through a wheat field of a morning and saying, God, could you show me the ones that don't feel good? Some guys get a real knack for it, but every now and then some of the best still miss one, don't they? God, could you show me who needs help? Man, what if we learn that in the wheat field and then use that same tactic at lunch? God, could you show me who needs help? And just listen to God, just do things. I wonder how many waitresses in the world today would benefit from people who listen to God. See, for the last three years, I've kind of really started leaning towards blessing people who work as opposed to those who don't. You know, there's people out there carrying two loads now. Somebody's missing, so they're carrying two loads. What if you're just there to help carry the load? What if you ask God, hey, show me who needs a little help. Show me which one's sick. He took away all our iniquities. He heals our diseases in that way. He said, show me who's sick. Why, why would we go out there and tie 30 calves down in a day? And give them $9 million worth of medicine. Yet we know the God of all creation. And I'd hate to take a head count of how many Christians have walked around in the last 30 days and laid their hands on a sick person and prayed over them. Maybe we've just been sitting with God and we'll start walking with him. It says right here, He's like a father to his children. He knows our frame and remembers that we are dust. That's the best news of the day. Do you know what really encourages me when I read that? Is God knows everything about me. Everything about me. And he's still in. There are people I know a little bit about and I'm out. <laughs> 
They're probably better than me. God knows everything about me. And he still wants to walk with me. He still wants to dwell with me. That's ridiculous. You know why? Out of his grace and mercy, he desires to keep creating opportunity and giving me a chance to make a right choice. How do you think it had gone for us or the next generation had we learned that about God, our Father, and making choices? Not about our choices that keeps us from getting eat up by the devil. Gosh, old Friday, I'm so tired of people measuring everything by the devil. Well, the evil one's out to get us, and the evil one's doing this. You know what he is? He's an ankle biter. He's an ankle biter. That's like a yapping chihuahua pulling on your pant leg. I think I could load steers, stomp on his head, and still not fall down. But we've created a boogeyman because everything's about, it's not about hearing God and following God in your everyday life. It's about avoiding doing stupid stuff. It's about avoiding sin. It's about everything everybody says is wrong. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Well, I'm going to tell you, if you're more about your father's business and doing it, you won't be thinking about not doing something. You'll be thinking about do doing something. Be do doers. Then the not doing, the bad stuff kind of goes away. Here in a minute, I'm going to talk about shutting the door. This is going to get really real here in a second. About shutting the door so you don't jack with this for the rest of your life. Shut the door. And so he says, for as, man, for as for man, his days are like grass. So we explain God. Now here's what men are. They, their days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it's gone. And his place remembers it no more. You're in and you're out. Oh, y'all are beautiful while you're here. You're gone. The Bible said our life is but a vapor. What if we spend our whole life trying to figure out how to follow God and how to do right and how to get to heaven when all we had to do was just figure out how to hear Him? Come to a saving relationship that lets us Hear, follow, and obey. What if we were able to do that and then teach our children, hey, this is going to sound crazy, but if you'll listen to God. Here's how I phrase it to horse sale people. It's kind of a trick. Because they expect me to get all religious on them. You know, I'm the guy that preaches and prays and does all that crazy stuff. People ask me all the time about where should I sell my horse? Should I bring him to this deal? What about blah, 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 blah. I don't know, flip a coin. No. Tell them, look, there's not a right answer. There's not a wrong answer. Listen to your gut. Is there anything speaking inside of you? Because at my house, there's a voice inside of me that I can go to and he's faithful. Now, if you've got one of them, Listen to it, because I can't tell you the answer. Your mind will lie to you every time. Right here, look inside and see what you ought to do. Then I just leave it at that. It's that simple. It's kind of like our other little old deal we do with the horse. It just went crazy. Robin was showing me another deal on Facebook, and the lady did this. I don't know what, she's a designer, room designer or something, isn't she? Yeah, like pretty good at it, I guess. Yeah, real good at it. She's got the deal of that little clip. If you don't believe in God, sit on a bucket and stare at your horse until you believe in God. NASA can't build one. General Motors can't build one. This amazing beast that we crawl on and ride is only created by the Creator. That simplicity, that reality, that's what's going to do this for everybody. This, 
How many of you are here tonight that's never been here before? Anybody? Never been here. That's what I thought. This doesn't work. Let me just tell you right now, this ain't working. If that's what, the, if that was the plan, this ain't working. Now, if the plan is for you to hear some things from the Bible and testimonies, so you go outside, and you're no longer a sitter with God, you're a walker too. Now we're getting somewhere. He said, "On those who fear Him, and His righteousness to children's children." Children's children. The greatest gift given in my life is my children's children. Yeah. Even though there two of them are now teenagers and have entered into the smartest time in their entire life. <laughs> we love being around them. To such as keep his covenant. We talk about that all the time, and I'll wind it up here. And to those who remember his commandments and do them, the Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. That's just what me and Murph was talking about at lunch today, and some other people brave enough to join us, and we was talking about the king ruling in his kingdom. I live in his peace, his joy, his love, his economy, his atmosphere. As for me and my house, we're well. We perfect. No. Are we well? Yes. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength and do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, you, you, his angels, who heed his word, who heed his voice, who excel in strength. We talked about this week before last, or last Tuesday in our Bible study thankfulness for his wisdom and his might. The wisdom to follow God and hear his voice and the strength to do what he says. And he said, bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. I'm not talking about somebody who had four years of cemetery. I'm not talking about somebody who's up the front, letters behind your name or none of that stuff. He's talking about you, his children, who are marked with the seal of God, the Holy Spirit. Not fearful of the mark of the beast because you bear the mark of God. God, I'm tired of talking about the enemy. I'm tired of talking about the Antichrist. I'm tired about the theatrics of the boogeyman and, and blowing the trumpet and the great escape and all these things that everybody does to create some type of drama. How about the simplicity that Jesus Christ came in the flesh? He walked on this earth. He walked with men. He died for our sins. He did it completely. His blood trickled down the post. It covered everything. Three days later, he got up out of the hole. And 50 days after that, he opened the door to heaven, that door that no man can shut and was only open one time. And he made a way for every man to enter in. The gate whose name is Jesus. All who come in by this name. All others are thieves and robbers. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord in John 10. And my sheep know me, they hear me, and they follow me. That same text promises life to the full. You ministers of his who does his pleasure. It pleases him that he would guide me to buy a horse. And I would listen and do it. That just don't sound like church stuff. Praise the Lord. Now we're getting down to God stuff. Or he tell me not to do something. I've had him do that. Had him tell me one time, don't buy any more roping caves. In my infinite wisdom, right then I reached down to my bag phone and ordered two loads from Mississippi. My God, it took three lifetimes to pay that back. It was a disaster, and my father tried to tell me. He said, bless the Lord all his works and all his places of his dominion. Where's God's dominion? Yeah, but only where he rules. 
He doesn't rule anywhere, everywhere. He owns everything, but he only rules for those who have allowed him to rule. You see, the prince of the air is kind of doing his thing around too. There's more than one voice in the earth. God didn't create a utopia. Because in a utopia where there's no evil, there's no choice. I asked God one time, a long time ago, sitting in my barn, I'll never forget it. Trying to minister to some people, and it's like banging my head on a brick wall, and I said, Lord, people are just dumb. I said, Lord, why don't you just make everybody like you? Won't you just make everybody get saved? Why you why you let everybody run around like a herd of idiots? He said, I gave him free will, and I said, God, I think that's a dumb idea. No, it's not. Because only through free will can a man find perfect love. And until you find that. You hadn't found anything. It's not that God so loved us. The second half of that is what day did we so love him? I love him so much that I don't stand around singing all day with my hands up. I sing terrible. I love him so much that I like to walk back and forth to the barn with him. I like to get up and walk with him down to my office in the morning and see what he's going to tell me for coffee with the colonel. I think God likes having coffee with the colonel. I think he likes to feed. I think God really enjoys driving down the highway in the pickup and looking at everything that he created through my windshield. For some odd reason, I think he likes being with me. I'm getting a new appreciation for being with him. I look back on so many opportunities in my life that I missed. Some that I was too ignorant to do anything about. Some I was fearful. Some I couldn't figure out ahead of time, so I didn't do it. You know, if you figure it out ahead of time, that's really not faith. <laughs> where everything's laid out in front of you. Sometimes you got to just do stuff and see where it goes. But to understand that God's my Father and that He loves His children and His children's children. You see, when you think about that one, that changes Thanksgiving and Christmas and all the stuff that religion messes up. God loves my children. And my children who are now his children, he loves their children. Think about that next time you're all piled up at the dining room table. He's our father. He owns it all. It's all at his discretion. He's patient. He's slow to anger. He's rich in mercy. He speaks. And his children hear. And the opportunity is there, and it's a gift of God to walk out your life in a way that creates opportunity. See, to take on the likeness of our Father, we too create opportunity. The last line of the day, this is what I've done right here in Muleshoe for 20 years. It just took a little time out to create some opportunity. Some people have found a pathway in that opportunity. Some people have chosen something else. Some people couldn't see it. Some people couldn't hear it. I can't do anything about that. It's like Matthew 28. Go and make disciples. You can't make anybody be anything. That word make means you create the atmosphere for. 
You create the opportunity. That opportunity was given one time by God when he opened the door of Revelation 3, a door that no man can open. Shut a door that no man can shut. But when that curtain was rent in two, when Jesus breathed his last, and the gateway to the heaven, the holy of holies, where all man could, all mankind could enter the throne room of grace and approach Jesus King, that door's open, and the kingdom stands. It will not be shaken. The door will not be shut. The opportunity's been given. Come or don't. Walk with God or don't. You're either the sheep of his pasture or you're a goat claiming to be a sheep. One of the two. We have to decide for ourselves today. No longer do I look for God to open doors in my life. God, open the door. To, open the door. Open the door. God, open. Let me tell you today that door's open. You know, the door you can't is the one on evil. Where the enemy wants to come in the camp, shut the door. You don't want something to bite you in the hind end two generations down the road, shut the door today. Shut the door. Don't crack the door, shut the door. Lock the door. You've been given authority to lock the door, shut the door. That door's been opened. He doesn't have to open it again. Nothing is impossible with God. All things are made available. The door's open. Now, you can live a spirit-led life and hear the Father's voice. You don't have to, but you can. You just got to decide if you want to or not. Well, it's hard. Well, I don't get it. You know what? I just listened to a 13-year-old play the mandolin. Now, you give me that mandolin and ask me to play the same song. Yeah. Here in a minute, I'm going to beat something with that mandolin. Ain't going to happen. You know why? Because I hadn't tried yet. I hadn't tried yet. Tonight, God created a herd of big pile of opportunity. Bust through a lot of stuff tonight and walk into something really cool. People on the other side of that camera ain't never heard stuff like this before, some of them. It's the truth. Your Father loves you. He gave you the opportunity. Now, will you go trial and error and work at it like a 13-year-old playing the mandolin? Or do you just want to come to church once a week and rub the Jesus genie bottle and see if something happens? That won't work. He wants to walk with you. So, I'm done tonight. That's all I've got to say about that. This has been a really good month. You, you just think, you'd think 27 years later, you'd have so much figured out. And what I realized is 27 years later, I've come so far in 20 years, I look back, and, and 20 years ago I thought I had it going on. You know what my hope is? 20 years from now I look back on today and go, God, you are a moron. You didn't know nothing. To know there's that much more, 20 more years, that I could look back on today and go, Oh, you didn't have near as much figured out as you thought you did. Growing in the Lord. Walking with God. It's an opportunity. Take it or not. So, let's pray. Lord, I just want to thank you for tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus, that you walk with us. That, Lord, you know what we need before we even ask for it. That, Lord, not only do you hear us, but we can hear you. 
that, Lord, you create opportunity in our life every day, and all we have to do is just follow your lead and your direction. Choose what we know we're being told to do. So, Lord, today I just thank you for that, that this is personal. And that, Lord, you are a personal God. And that, Lord, it's not just about heaven and hell. This is about life today. For us, our children, our children's children. The epitome of freedom is the Spirit-led life. So, Lord, tonight we praise you for your life, death, and resurrection and your Holy Spirit has brought life to our mortal bodies. Lord, there's many here tonight and some here tonight, some listening that might need prayer, need a special touch. There's some here tonight who have people in their lives that need a special touch, that need prayer, need help. God, did I pray they'll leave this place and go help them. Pray over them with faith. Reach out and touch someone. Direct our steps, God. You, you, you direct all that. So, Lord, we just, again, I just want to thank you. Bless you, Lord, for all the good gifts, including the gift of opportunity. In your mighty name, Jesus, amen. Amen. <laughs>